Shall we start this event now? Six p.m. Yeah, sure. Let's get started. Good evening, everyone. Uh, for those of you who are joining us uh, for the second time, thanks for joining in again. And for those of you who are joining the first time, so this is the Python Sprint Two, which is going to cover the basics of Python. And this is this event is organized by Code Academy along with Foss Club. And a quick introduction about um, the core members. Uh, I'm Pranav. I'm a third year data science student at Jain University, and um, I'm part of the Anova Club and the GDSC Club uh, along with the Code Academy Club. Uh, so I'm currently exploring uh, different domains like data science, machine learning, deep learning, AI, and uh, cloud computing. So we have with us uh, Ashwin Bharat, who is the, uh, the, the uh, chapter lead at uh, Code Academy, Jain University. Maybe Ashwin, you can inter introduce yourself. Sure. So, hello everyone. Uh, once again, I welcome you all for this uh, follow-up event from Python Sprint. So, myself Ashwin Bharat. I'm from Jain University. Uh, currently pursuing my final year in software engineering. I'm specializing in web development. I have built uh, full-stack web applications on Monstack. And I've also explored other databases from the backend and build several REST APIs. So I welcome you all. I hope this uh, event will be helpful for you in the future, right? So we also have uh, follow-up events for this, this Python sprint. So stay tuned. And once again, thanks for joining. Thank you so much, Ashwin. And we also have with us Sharanya, who is also the co-organizer for this event. Sharanya. Hi guys, so this is Sharanya from Data Science third year at Jain University. I'm a Data Science Head for this Code Academy chapter and also a core member for the ANOVA Club. I'm currently pursuing uh, machine learning and uh, AI fields. So thank you for joining the event. We have furthermore events to come in this field. Uh, so guys, for those of you who are uh, confused about this, uh, so this is the Python Sprint 2, which is a part of, part of covering the basics of Python. We'll also be extending this to various other domains as well. So just keep attending all these events and stay tuned for uh, much more learning. And so today's event will be hosted by Keepti Chellori. She's also a third year student uh, from data science in Jain University. And she's also the head of technical content writing at GDSC and, and also an ANOVA core member. So she's also exploring uh, different domains uh, like data science, ML, DL, AI, and cloud computing technologies. So I guess I'll hand over the session to Keepti now and uh, all the best, guys. Uh, just uh, keep, uh, either you can unmute or you can just uh, drop your questions in the chat box if you have any. We'll just keep answering them. Uh, over to Keepti. Hi, guys. Uh, thank you for attending this event. Uh, so uh, as of now, uh, thank you, Pranav. It's a very good introduction about me. So there is nothing much. Uh, I think we could uh, step into this event further. Actually, before stepping into this event, I need to solve some doubts uh, in which you people have asked in the sprint session one. Uh, so for those people who are not unable to use Colab, you can use Jupyter Notebook, you can use NetBeans, whichever uh, console that supports Python, you can use any of that. For data science people, I would recommend Jupyter Notebook because it's very good for visualization. And for deep learning packages, you can go for Google Colab to run various packages. And also, uh, if you if you want the IPY and the file of session one, uh, my co-organizers will drop it in the chat uh, chat box. You can go through it. Now, I think we can start the session. Mr. Yeah, I think my screen is visible to you, right? Yes, Kitty, yes. Uh, so today we're going to learn about Python basic operators. So operators play a very important role in programming, but uh, it doesn't have the same relationship with every programming language. With Python, it's somewhat different compared to many other languages. So before uh, getting into what type of operators we have in Python, let us know what's the meaning of operator and how it plays a very important role. Uh, so generally, operators provide a vital role in programming, and it is the combination of values as well as other identifiers uh, from expressions and statements, which is also known as essential building block of Python programming. 
So operators are not only uh, like uh, they can be used with symbols to perform various mathematical as well as logical manipulations. So we have operands along with operators. Operands are nothing but they are the values or variables with which operator is applied to. Uh, for example, let us take a scenario. We have here the example as you can see on the screen: six plus two equal to eight. Here we can say that plus symbol is an operator, and six and two are the two operands, which gives us a result. Eight. Here we are just using a single operator to manipulate the whole equation. So let us now know about different uh, types of operators we have. So we have uh, arithmetic operators in Python as well as assignment operators, comparison operators, logical operators, identity operators, membership operators, and bitwise operators. These are the main operators that we're gonna use in Python. And not only in Python. Before you start any programming language, these are the important operators you should know about. So first, let us go with the arithmetic operator. So arithmetic operator are they are pretty much uh, similar that we have learned from our sixth standard from our secondary education. You know about addition, right? Subtraction, multiplication, division. Uh, uh, we have modulus, which returns us the remainder, and we have exponential, and we have a floor division. Floor division is somewhat different uh, from our secondary education, uh, and it plays a different role, and it has a different relationship in Python language. So, uh, in coding purpose, you can write it as x plus y. You can take any two variables and apply the operator, arithmetic operator, to those two variables. Now, let us see uh, arithmetic operators in Jupyter notebook. You will have a clear idea about it. So I can share you the screen. Yeah, as you can see, uh, I have declared two variables here, x and y, uh, and I have associated with the values ten with an operator equal to and y equal to two. So now I am going to perform addition for these two. Uh, since Python is dynamically typed language, we do not need to declare the data type of a particular variable. It assigns itself. That is the advantage we have with Python as compared to many other languages. So just I'll run this cell. You can see it gives the direct output of adding x plus y. Then we have subtraction. It gives you eight. Then we have multiplication. It gives you twenty. Then we have division as normal max we do. It gives you always remember in Python the division will be in the float value. The remainder we get is always represented in float value when you use division. So now we will move into another operator that is modular operator under arithmetic. So modular operator is nothing but it gives you the remainder. Whenever the divisor is positive, it's a simple, normal, regular division. What reminder you get? But you need to take care when the divisor is negative, because when the divisor is negative, we apply floor in Python. Only in Python we apply floor. Uh, for people who don't know about floor, I'll explain you. No worries. As you can see, uh, uh, for doing modular division in Python, we use the formula, which is the back end formula. Uh, that is R equal to a minus N into floor of a by n. So here r is the remainder, a is the dividend, and n is the divisor. So what is floor? Floor is nothing but it is an equation which is used to do floor division. Uh, when you keep positive numbers within the floor, the floor division will return the same result as tr uh, truncated division. Uh, for people who doesn't know about truncated division, it is nothing but uh, we use in different uh, like we use the truncated division in Java, JavaScript, C, C plus plus. All follow the truncated division. Uh, here in Python, we follow the floor. The main difference between truncation and floor is nothing but, for example, here we have. Just a minute. Uh, so here we have floor, as you can see. Uh, when you apply a uh, floor for eight uh, and three, here where R is the result, what we gonna get in here in place of a, we gonna take eight, and in place of n, we gonna take minus three. So uh, the formula for it is uh, after substituting it in the formula, eight minus of minus three into floor of eight divided by minus three. 
where uh, the next step will be r equal to 8 minus of minus 3 into floor of where 8 divided by minus 3 is uh, minus 2.666. So uh, when there is a negative number in the uh, induced in the floor, we round that particular value away from the zero. So um, when minus 2.66 is rounded away from the zero, the value will be minus 3. So R is equal to 8 minus of minus 3 into minus 3. Uh, so the final result will be R equal to 8 minus 9. That is R equal to minus 1. That's it. So this is the type of flow division we follow in Python. But whereas in other languages like C, C++, JavaScript, we follow truncation. Truncation is nothing but uh, when you, uh, the same formula is replaced with truncation instead of flow. That is R equal to 8 minus of minus 3 into truncation of 8 divided by minus 3. That is uh, 8 divided by minus 3 is nothing but minus 2.666 as you can see. This minus 2.66 is rounded towards the 0 which is opposite of the flow division. In flow we round it away from the 0. In truncation we round it towards the 0. So the final result will be r equal to 2. So this is the backend that is built in the python that uh, that is the main formula behind modulus and flow division so let us check now uh, as as we have seen we have taken values for x and y that is x equal to 10 and y equal to 2 now i am going to do the modulus division for x and y as you can see the reminder is zero and i am taking with the negative number now uh, for negative i going to do the modulus it is 2 now 10 modulus of minus 6, it's minus 2. Uh, this all this can be solved by abo, uh, substituting them in the above formula as I have shown you. That is r equal to a minus n into floor of a by n. So now we directly do the flow division without inserting any modulus. That is, uh, as you can see, the double slash in Python represents the flow division between two variables. It's 5. Now we have taken this as minus y. Let us see. It's minus y. Now I'm taking directly uh, numericals instead of variables. So it's minus 7. Uh, you can substitute it in the above given formula and you can recheck them manually. So this is all about arithmetic operators. Now I'll move on into assignment of operators we have. So uh, here we have, these are the assignment operators. Uh, just have a look at them. Assignment operators are nothing but uh, they are used to assign values to the variables. For example, when you are declaring any variable, there should be a, some, opera, some operator in order to assign a value to that. So here, here we have different type of assignment operators. Uh, don't confuse by seeing this equation. For example, we have x plus equal to 3. It is same as x equal to x plus 3. And similarly, we have x exponential equal to 3. It is nothing but x equal to x of exponential 3. And so on. Here, as you can see, this is and equal to or equal to x or equal to right shift equal to left shift, left shift equal to. So I'll explain you about these operators in detail while we move into the Jupyter notebook. Just a minute. So here, here we have the assignment operators. Uh, so I'm declaring a variable x and assign a value 5 using the operator equal to. Now I'm going to print x. So it's 5. Now I'm using uh, plus equal to assignment operator to my variable. As usual, it prints 8. That is nothing but 5 plus 3 equal to 8. Now I'm using minus equal to equal to 3. That is nothing but 5 minus 3 equal to 2. And similarly, we have exponential, that is 15. Sorry, the above one is the multiplication. And now we have the division, that's 5.0. Now we have modulus division, that is 2.0. And now we have the floor division, that is 0, 0.0. Now I have taken here another variable y. Uh, y equal to 15 and I have applied the exponential assignment operator to it. That is nothing but y path 3. So I am going to 15 path 3 is nothing but 3375. So this, uh, these are some of the assignment operators. Now I will go into one more assignment operator that is and equal to. Uh, for people who doesn't know how and e uh, equal to works, it's nothing but uh, 
for example, if you are familiar with logic gates, I think uh, you have a pretty much idea about this AND, OR, and XOR. Okay, fine. We'll just have a recap about it. For example, I'm taking here two numbers, that is one and one. Uh, when I'm applying AND operator between one and one, it gives you one. One is uh, declared as true here and zero is declared as false. For example, I'm using AND operator between one and zero. It, it will give me a result of zero, which is false. And similarly for zero one and zero zero. So uh, let us see how this works. So this is the basic rule, uh, basic rule that applies anywhere when you're using AND operator between any two numbers or any two variables and any anything. So for example, I take two and three. Uh, I have written two in the binary format, which is one zero and three I have written in the binary format as one one. So now I'm going to apply and operator between two and three. So zero and one returns you zero, one and one it returns you one. This one zero it is the binary format, which represents the decimal format of two. I think I'm clear here. So now just declare a variable Z and I have assigned a value to now I'm using assignment operator, which is and equal to, and I'm printing my variable Z. It gives you two. It's nothing but uh, the main manual work behind this code is the above one, which I have discussed here, two and three. It can be implemented in Python like this. Now let us go to OR operator. So uh, here in OR, similarly as N, we take one and zero. But in OR, we apply OR operator between 1 or 1. That is 1. It gives you true. 1 or 0, it gives you 1. That is true. And 0 or 1 is true. 0 or 0 is false. Now, now let us see how we can apply OR operator between numericals. I'm taking 2 and 3. So 2 is written as 1, 0 in the binary format. And 3 is written as 1, 1 in the binary format. So now I'm going to apply OR operator between 2 and 3. That is 0 or 1 gives you 1. 1 or 0 gives you 1. 1, 1 is the binary representation of decimal 3. Now the similar can be done using the Python code. Now I'll run with run the cell. As you can see, it gives you the result 3. That's about OR operator. Now we'll move on to XOR operator. So in XOR operator, you take one and one and the uh, one X or one, the result is zero, which is false. And similarly, one X or zero, the result is one, which is two. Zero X or one, the result is one, which is two. Zero X or zero, the result is zero, which is false. Now, uh, the symbol you can see here, it, this is the X or symbol we, which we represent. So two X or three, two is represented in the binary format as well as three is represented in the binary format. Now zero X or one is one. 1 XOR 1 is 0. It gives you 1 as the decimal. So a similar work can be implemented by using the Python code. That is 0. Now we will move into left shift and right shift. So uh, before X, right shift and X is nothing but, it, uh, sorry, X uh, is nothing but it is the number and N is nothing but it is the number of digits to be shifted. So always remember that when you are using a left shift or a right shift operator between the variables, make sure that your decimal is represented in 8 bits. Represent your decimal in 8 bits. So for example, here I'm representing my decimal 4 in 8-bit binary format. And now I'm applying it uh, a left shift operator that is 2. That is uh, number of digits to be shifted is by 2. So as you can see, originally the 4 is written here in 8-bit format. When you're uh, shifting using the left shift, uh, the result will be 0, 0, 001 and 0, 0, 0. Nothing but the 1 is shifted two places towards the left. And this binary format is nothing but it is equal to 16 in decimal. Now I'll move on to right shift 2. Uh, here, nothing but uh, the one is shifted two places towards the right, as you can see here. And this binary representation is uh, represents one in the decimal format. So the same manual work can be implemented easily in Python by just assigning an operator that is right shift equal to, you can see here, it's one. And similarly, as well as left shift, it's four. That's pretty much about assignment operators. Yeah.
now we will move on to comparison operators so these comparison operators are nothing but when you are declaring two values or two variables this comparison operators helps you to compare those two values or those two variables we have equal we have not equal to we have greater than less than we have greater than or equal to and less than or equal to so uh, let us see how this works in our python code Uh, this is our comma. Here I have taken another two variables e and f, and for e I have assigned a value six, and for f I have assigned a value seven. So now I am checking whether e is equal to f. Uh, guys, don't confuse between single equal to and double equal to. Single equal to is used to assign a value to that variable, whereas double equal to is used to compare the value between two variables. Okay, just shift. Enter. It's false. Always remember, comparison operator will return you result in the terms of Boolean expression. It will not return you values in numerical format. So uh, when you are comparing e and f, as six is not equal to seven, it returned as false. Now I am checking where e is not equal to f. It's true. Since as we know that six is not equal to seven, now e greater than f. It's false. Obviously, six is not greater than seven. Now we are checking e less than f. As it is true, six is less than seven. Now I am checking here e greater than or equal to f. Uh, I think concentrate on my pronunciation. That is greater than or equal to. You can see that we are using or between greater than and equal to. As I have said, when you are using an or operator, if any one of the primary conditions satisfies, it returns you the result as true. For example, e greater than or equal to f. It returns you false because e uh, e is means six. Six is obviously not greater than seven, and also six is not equal to seven, in which both the conditions are not satisfied. So it will return you false. Now I am checking e less than or equal to f. It will return you true because one condition is satisfied in this particular cell. That is, uh, e is less than f. As obviously six is less than seven. It satisfied. That's the reason it gave you the Boolean expression as true. Now we will move on to the logical operators. So here we have the logical operators. Logical operators are nothing but they are pretty much useful when you are declaring the conditional statements. They are used to combine the conditional statements and sometimes as well as to compare them. So as you can see, we have three types of logical operators and or and not so what does this and operator do is it will return true if the given both statements are true and or operator it will return true if either one of the statement is true and not operator will reverse the result that is if we are getting the result as false it will reverse it and will give the result as true so let us see uh, how x or y works for example here i am declaring x and y as two variables if if x is true, then it will return the output as true. But if it is false, it will check for condition y. If y is true, uh, then it will give you the true output. If it is false, it will give you the false output. Let us see how it will works in the Jupyter notebook. See this here. Yeah, we are having logical operators. So we are checking e less than 3 and e greater than 4. Let us share what it will return false because obviously 6 is not less than 3 and 6 is also not uh, like uh, it is uh, since we are using and here it's compulsory that the two conditions should satisfy. If either two conditions are satisfied then it will return you the result as true. If either one of it fails it will return the result as false. Now we are using the or operation is true because one condition is satisfied that is e, e greater than 4. Now I am using the two operators of logical that is not and and which will give you the opposite result that is true because uh, as you can see uh, in the upper cell we have taken e less than 3 and e greater than 4 which gave us the result false and for this false we are applying the not logical operator that is which gives you the opposite of false that is true. So now let's move on to the identity operators. So identity operators 
or also use it to compare the object but uh, they are not equal that is if they are actually with the same object with the same memory location or you are using identity operators when they are present in the same memory location for example you have two identity operators in python that is is and is not for example we take is it will return us true if both the variables are of the same object for example is not will return true if both the variables are not present in the same object in code we'll uh, declare two variables x and y and we use the operator in between them that is x is y and another operator x is not y between two variables so let us move on to the jupyter notebook and have a quick recap so here i am using identity operator i am applying is identity operator between two variables e and f it is false because e and f are declared separately and they are not present in the same object and e is not f it will return true similar condition where e is not present in the same object now we'll move on to membership operators so membership operators are used to test if a sequence is present in a uh, present in an object for example uh, in the previous identity operators we have checked whether the given variables are present in the same object but here we are testing a sequence which is present in the same object or not so we have two membership operators that is in and not in uh, in always returns true if a particular sequence you are searching for is present in the object and not in will always return true if your particular sequence you want or what you are searching for is not present in an object in core format we write it as x in y where x and y are variables and in is the operator and x not in y where x and y are variables and not in is the operator so as you can see uh, here i have modified it uh, i have used if else loop uh, so let us see how membership operator works so i have declared two variables x and y and i have initiated the value x equal to 24 and y equal to 20 and now i am preparing a list which consists of 10 20 30 40 50 15 numericals for those people who doesn't know about list list is nothing but it is a data type in a python which we represent using a square brackets and the value separated using commas it can be homogeneous and heterogeneous you can insert any type of values into the list okay so i am uh, i am applying if condition here and using not in membership operator that is if x not in list then it will print as x is not present in the given list if uh, x is not present in the given list then it moves to the else operator that is if x is present in the given list then it prints as x is present in the given list now similarly i am using if else operator for y variable for example i am using here in operator in membership operator so if y is present in a given list then it will print as y is present in a given list otherwise it will move to the else statement and print it as y is not present in the given list as you can see it gives since 24 is not present in the given list it is represented as not present in given list and for y uh, is present in the given list it gives you that y is present in the given list uh, now we'll move on to the bitwise operators Um, so these are the bitwise operators uh, bitwise operators are similar that we have used previously in the assignment operators i have taught you like and that is nothing but it sets each bit to one if the both bits you are taken are one and similarly or if either one of the bit you have taken is equal to one it returns you the result one by setting each bit to one and similarly we have xor we have negation or not not is also called as a negation it's nothing but it inverts all the bits for example uh, let us take you have a binary format of 0 01 it will invert the bits as 0 to 1 and 1 to 0 that is 0 01 is nothing but 1 1 0 when you apply the negation to it so and similarly we have zero fill left shift which is similar to the left shift we have used in the assignment operator previously and we have a signed right shift which is similar to the assignment operator which uh, we have used so they are basically bitwise operators are basically used to compare binary numbers so when you are dealing with binary numbers it's very important to know about the bitwise operators so i'll move into the jupyter notebook 
Yeah, these are the bitwise operators. Uh, I have uh, taken two variables here, a and b, and I have assigned the values 10 for a and 4 for b. And now I applied uh, each bitwise operator between them. As you can see, and I, as I have previously discussed in the assignment operators, here you can find how and operator works, how or operator works, how XOR operator works, and how the left shift and right shift works which is pretty much similar to the bitwise operators now we have a uh, use here. So I'm going to run this. As you can see, you have the values term. That's it. So after learning about the basic operators in Python, it's important to know when you have given a particular equation with multiple operators, it's important for you people to know which operator should you solve first. For that reason, we have given you a table here. Uh, these are the Python operator present. As you can see, we have different types of operators here. Each operator has a specific uh, uh, line to it. For example, the highest precedence you have is for exponential. And from exponential, you go to the lowest, that is OR. Boolean OR has the least precedence. So depending on this uh, uh, table, you need to solve your equations. Uh, you cannot solve, uh, like you cannot use not first and then and. It totally depends on the precedence. That's it about Python operators. Thank you. Now I hand over this session to Sharanya. That was a nice session, Keerti. So guys, we'll continue this session with a Kahoot game. So I'll share you the link so that you guys can join now. One second. If you guys have any doubts, you can put it in the chat session, then we'll answer all your, all of your doubts. Sharanya, I think you can start the Kahoot session. Meanwhile, they'll post the doubts. Yeah. So guys, this is the game pin. So make sure you guys join now. Guys, no need to worry. These are just to test your skills or how much you have gained the knowledge so that you can prepare yourself according to that. And guys, make sure that uh, you practice the IPYNB files which we are sharing in the chat box. So that uh, practice is very important regarding coding.
Guys, we'll wait for another two minutes and we're going to start the Kahoot session. If anyone is there to join, please join. Make it fast. Okay guys, then let's start the game. I think next question. We have called a one, two, three at the first position. Akil at second, Satvika at third. Next. Guys, uh, please check the question carefully. You have only 10 seconds to answer this. Just make sure you keep the right answer. Next. We have Coda 1, 2, 3 again in the lead position and we have Jet at the second position. Right. Thank you. Next question. Had Satvika in the second position and Om at the third. Next. Satvika in the lead position. Good. Next. First place. Okay, next. Shanya, can you join the question? I think so. This book.
we have sattvika in the leading position next guys hold on last four questions you can get through it okay next We have Om again in the first place. Next. Congratulations, all of you three. Uh, Om Satvika and Star Gazer, whoever it is, can you please respond to me in the chat box? How was the session today? And also remaining people. Thank you, Om Jain. Wow. Thank you, Sujay. Thank you, Ganesh. Now I'll hand on to our chapter lead, Ashwin Bharat. Uh, yeah, thank you, Kirti and Pranav, as well as Sharanya, for this amazing event. I think uh, both the event as well as the game was fun, right? And I uh, can see people are very, very much interested in this uh, event as well. They have seen uh, the poster. It is very interesting, quite informative. So, like, we will also be conducting other events, guys, as a... Uh, uh, follow up uh, set of events, okay? Where uh, uh, Kirti, Sharan, Yasalas, Pranav, they'll be uh, in the future moving towards data science track where they'll be covering a lot of uh, more libraries that are present in Python as well. And I'll, I'll also be inviting other guest uh, lecturers from uh, the Code Academy community, uh, right? Where they, there are like a lot of... Uh, chapters in which they are interested to come over here and teach you other topics. Okay, so this has been great. So I think let's wrap up this event for now.